Fifty Bales of Hay, Chapter 10, written and narrated by Delilah McKennell. Chapter 10. Breeze comes to a sudden halt as Sasha and Ebony join suit. With my eyes completely transfixed, I stare ahead in awe at the endless blue ocean. It entwines miraculously with the deep blue sky, miles away into the distance. I watch, totally mesmerised. The rays from the late afternoon sun dance on the top of the flowing waves as they gently push the seawater, slowly and softly, back onto the glorious grains of sand, which lies like a magical and endless golden carpet. I'll never tire of this breathtaking view, says Auntie, letting out a huge sigh, her voice momentarily spoiling this perfect and tranquil moment. I can't remember the last time I saw anything so beautiful, says Mia, slowly turning her head towards me, looking inquisitively into my eyes, her eyebrows raised with an extremely warm smile. Oh, a ripple of tiny tremors set off in readiness from deep within, as the excitement shining in her captivating eyes instantly sets my pulse racing. Me neither, answers Auntie, totally oblivious to the special moment me and I are now sharing. Who would like a paddle in the sea? Uh, yep, yes, I stutter, still gazing longingly at the beautifulness of Mia. Mia's dreamy smile gradually turns into a grin, and at this precise moment I would give anything to feel her lips firmly caressing mine. The sexual longing every part of me has ached for over the last few hours is growing stronger by the moment. It's taken me completely by surprise, a feeling I never could have imagined experiencing. Once again, I try hard to clear the amorous thoughts propelling through my mind. Breeze carries me across the endless carpet of golden sand. This is just perfect. It feels like we are marooned on a desert island, not another human or animal to be seen. I would love to be trapped on a desert island with Mia. I picture the two of us lying naked, gently caressing and exploring every single inch of each other's bodies. You look as though you're deep in your own little dream world, Jasmine, I suddenly hear Auntie's voice inquire. Feeling flushed and thankful she is unable to read my mind, I quickly reply, you're right. I was dreaming about the three of us cantering along this heavenly beach. Great recovery, Jazz. I need to be extra careful with what I say in front of Auntie. She is far from daft. It would be very rare indeed if she misses anything which is going on directly under her nose. Well, Mia, what do you think? Can we make Jasmine's dream come true? Says Auntie with a grin. Mia eagerly nods in agreement and I watch closely as Auntie moves Sasha forward to a trot, closely followed by Mia and Ebony. Are you ready, boy? I ask him before turning him around to face the others. Breeze immediately responds and within a couple of seconds, the two of us find ourselves cantering over the rich surface of the desert looking sand beneath us. This feeling is second to none. The freedom, the wind blowing through Breeze's striking white mane can only be described as pure ecstasy. The sound of his hoofs striding across the gold-plated carpet below and the nearby waves gently crashing against the shoreline is a moment I will treasure forever. Reluctantly, I gently ease him down to a trot as we pull up alongside Mia and Ebony. How exhilarating was that, she asks, catching her breath. Her cheeks glow with joy. I resist the deep wanting to lean towards her to kiss her tenderly on the lips. Once again, our eyes lock and for an instant it feels like the rest of the world doesn't exist. The pulsating and throbbing deep down below are enough to drive me to despair. Shall we go for a splash and a cool down in the sea, asks Auntie, interrupting our moment. 
I think you need a good cooling down in certain areas, don't you, Jazz? You'd like that, my boy, wouldn't you? I asked Breeze, who nods his head up and down in response as I shuffled slightly uncomfortable around in the saddle. The texture beneath us gradually starts to change as we head towards the tranquil and calmness of the sea. I smile as the foamy froth of the waves slowly melt before my eyes, completely disappearing out of sight. The powerful and endless miles of deep blue water seductively invite me towards it. Bree snorts at the coldness of the first incoming waves touching his front hooves. He bravely walks forward as the cold sea spray gets to work attaching itself to any exposed skin on my body. My arms, my neck, my cheeks feel moist and damp. A bit like um, deep down below, I think with a grin. Breeze and I stand in silence, taking in another wondrous moment. Very slowly, I close my eyes to take in a deep and relaxing breath. The sound of the waves gently splashing all around has an instant calming and therapeutic effect on my soul. Hey, Jazz, I hear Mia's soft voice. I open my eyes to see her and Ebony right by my side. Her left leg brushes against my right one, and a sudden bolt of chemical electricity races through my veins. I watch as Mia turns her head away, and I quickly look in the direction of where she's glancing. Auntie is facing the other way, around 20 feet away from us, with Sasha looking to be having an awesome time, splashing and pouring her front foreleg into the beautiful blue sea. Instantly, I feel Mia's lips burning against mine. I immediately respond with no hesitation at all. Her tongue seductively teases the underside of mine. I am on fire. Eventually and very reluctantly, Mia drags her lips from mine before quickly turning her head to check on Auntie's location. No change. Sasha is still busy playing in the sea and Auntie seems oblivious to anything else around her. She looks to be happily locked away in her own little world. Mia sighs with relief and smiles at me warmly. I take in every inch of her soft, tender skin with an uncontrollable yearning and longing to want to kiss her once again. I casually touch her hand, giving it a gentle squeeze. That smile, oh, that stunning hypnotic smile is enough to send me completely crazy moment is interrupted as Bree suddenly pours the water with his front off four, splashing droplets of seawater over an ebony and mirror. He continues to play around in the water, so I let him have his head, glancing quickly to see if Auntie is still turned the other way. I grin, knowing the coast is now clear, and lean slowly towards Mia. Tenderly, my right finger caresses the top of her cheekbone, moving teasingly down towards her luscious and red lips. I momentarily hear a gasp before she slowly wraps her right hand firmly around mine, guiding my finger down to her chin, the length of her slender neck, and seductively down towards her breastbone. I close my eyes and let out a quiet moan with the softness of her skin. I feel her lips lightly caressing my cheek as she holds my hand securely against her throbbing chest. Are you okay? Auntie calls from a distance. I am unable to speak. The precious moment we have just shared has totally overwhelmed me. Uh, yes, Trudy, we are fine, thank you. Just thought she had something in her eye, but I can't see anything, calls back Mia, smiling at me with a naughty wink. Probably a grain of sand, that's all. Don't worry, it'll work its own way out eventually. Make sure you don't rub it, Jasmine, or you'll make your eyes sore, says Auntie, pulling up by the side of me and Breeze. It'll be fine, I tell her with a smile, turning my head slightly so she doesn't notice my hot, flushed cheeks. I suppose we ought to start heading back. I have one more lesson booked at seven o'clock and I bet the pair of you have got plenty of revision to do, she asks. Yes, I suppose you're right. Unfortunately, I have a mountain of studying to get through, although I'd rather stay here in this special and magical place, sighs Mia. I know how you feel. Every time I ride over here, any busy thoughts in my mind completely vanish and my body feels 
totally revitalised. Jasmine, now what are your plans for this evening, inquires Auntie. Well, sadly, I too have revision to do, but maybe once you have finished your lesson, the two of us could sit down with a nice glass of something spicy and you can continue to explain what you need me to do with your social media pages, I reply with a naughty grin across my face, raising one eyebrow at the same time. Auntie snorts and giggles whilst Mia looks at us both inquiringly. Sounds like a plan, Auntie blurts out with a nod and a wink.